Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about five things that are bad or not great when it comes to studying at Concordia University here in Montreal. Now this video is going to be more controversial. Some people may agree, some people won't. Use the comments to share your experience or your perspective um, and we can discuss things there if you disagree with me or if you think I'm missing things out or overestimating certain aspects. Let's get right into it. Start with point number one. This is something that I've also mentioned in another video where I talked about the good things about Concordia. We are very integrated into downtown. We don't really have our own campus. The problem with that is you don't get that feeling of unity. Like the, the I'd say the identity or the identification of the students with the university is rather weak. It's more like a utility, the university. You go there to study, but it doesn't feel like a family per se. Now, some majors, some groups form themselves, and you know, you have your group in uni, obviously, you identify with them, but the kind of image um, or the feeling that you're part of something bigger that is called Concordia University, in my experience and the experience of the people that I surround myself with, it hasn't really been the case. Um, for some people that might be an advantage actually, for some it might not. If you're looking for that typical North American, you know, feeling of high school campus, everybody supports all the sports teams all the time, weekend all you do is go to one sports game after the other, you hang out on campus the entire time, see all your friends all the time, it's just not the case. Uh, for me, you know, like you go to classes, you have your classes and you go back home. You go to your apartment, you go to Plateau, you stay in downtown. Some people stay in the library, some people are in the library all the time, but it's not necessarily that you go to campus in the morning, you stay on campus all day long and then you go back, you know, go back from campus, go back home in the evening. We have restaurants spread all over the city, we have shops spread all over the city. Um, so you, there's really no need to stay on campus per se the entire time. Now with that, um, we do also have Loyola, which is a separate campus, like 30 minutes away from, from downtown Montreal. The university provides free shuttles that go every 30 minutes between the campuses. So it's very accessible in a way. Um, on Loyola, it's more like that kind of unified feeling because Loyola is so far outside Montreal that there are no other shops and anything. So you would go to Loyola, you would spend your day there and then go back to downtown or some people even live at Loyola. There is a student residence there too. Um, depending on your program, on your major, you might spend more time on Loyola, you might not. Um, but if you're looking for that kind of campus feeling, Honestly, I don't think um, you'll get that as much at Concordia as you would get at other universities. Even McGill here has more of that because they're a little bit more segregated um, while still being close to downtown. Um, yeah, for me personally, I prefer the super integrated um, into downtown of Concordia to the segregated uh, McGill, honestly. Um, I like the feeling of being integrated downtown. I don't need that feeling, but I know a lot of people go to college for that kind of feeling. So be aware of that. Now I mentioned the two campuses. This can be an advantage if you prefer the kind of outside campus and the calmer area and you take your classes there. But also it comes with a disadvantage because some people, especially if you're in arts and science, I think that's probably the major that has the most classes there but also like theater students some majors just have a lot of classes at Loyola and that means you have to commute forth and back it's not a massive commute it's 30 minutes but it's you know it's 30 minutes and you have to go forth and back you forgot something at home you just can't can't just go back something to consider that's in my opinion the second kind of disadvantage of living or studying here in Montreal at Concordia University let's get to the third point now this is going to be controversial too. Um, I know most of the people that work for Concordia University do the best they can. Maybe they lack resources, whatever it is. I've personally had very bad experiences with the support um, and the admins at Concordia and I know quite a few people that also had bad experience. 
Now, it's not that university necessarily act proactively puts hurdles into your way, but if there is a problem, I found it very difficult, honestly, to solve it with Concordia. Most of the time, these kind of problems you have to figure out and solve on your own. Don't kill me in the comments, please. But share great experiences if you have. Normally they're very kind and they're very generous and, and just nice people. But when you have to solve a problem quickly, you know, being nice is, is cool, but it doesn't usually get the problem done, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, it's always pleasant to interact with them. But when you actually have to get stuff done, it's just, yeah, it can be very difficult. Point number four. Concordia has an extremely high independence when it comes to choosing classes and courses in general. And I guess this is a North American thing. As a European, it's fascinating and it's awesome. Um, in Europe, you choose one, one major, you choose one kind of stream you go into. And if you want to change your direction, you have to quit and you have to restart something else. Here, you can adjust as you go. You can try out different classes, you can try out classes from a completely different department. It doesn't really matter. You can just see whatever works best for you and you can try out. Now, the great thing about that is the option of having the flexibility. But the problem with that is also, you don't really have a guarantee of getting the classes that you actually need. Concordia does prioritize. So for example, if I'm in fine arts and I want to take a specific business class, some business classes are not open for fine arts students or outside department students unless there are leftover spots, you know, after the deadline for applying. So you can waitlist yourself and hope that it doesn't get full, but often that doesn't happen. Um, so it's very competitive in a way you have to be fast in choosing and um, selecting classes that you want because you don't have a guarantee that you get them. But Concordia does try their best to actually make sure the people that need the classes get their classes. Another example of how they try to do this is, for example, the closer you are to graduating, the earlier you get to choose the classes. So the earlier, like, the earlier you are in the process of actually being able to sign up for classes. And the last thing that one con could consider rather bad about Concordia University is it's extremely fast paced. Now this does have advantages. It makes everything more difficult and in a way it proves that you're capable of handling stress more or better than maybe other students or students from other universities. But um, the way I experienced it is that the classes are extremely, extremely fast. It requires a lot of independent work. It requires a lot of time after and before classes, preparation, post like work on the classes, you really have to be self-confident and um, firm in your ability to organize yourself and manage your schedule. I know this is a thing generally when it comes to studying at universities, but Concordia seems to be another level um, on that, especially if you're in the engineering part, um, especially if you're in even some of the business classes um, generally, compared to other universities, um, things that I've heard, the stories that I've heard, we have a very, very high paced environment. Now, the great thing is, um, you know, once the class is done, it is done. In Germany, for example, you basically, you have a phase where you have the lectures, you have a phase where you have the examinations, sometimes they overlap, sometimes you have a break in between them, but you can't really have a break because you're studying for the examination and everything. Here, it's very clear, you have your semester. Within the semester, it's stressful, but after the semester, you can relax and you have nothing to worry about. But compared even to other North American universities, it seems like Concordia has a very high speed on the classes. And that's a wrap on the bad things or negative things about studying at Concordia University. I try to be as transparent as possible. Now, I'm sure other people had other experiences. Um, share your experiences in the comments. This is very important. The great things, and I did videos about the great things, you know, that I've experienced at Concordia. Um, those are heavily promoted and marketed by the university itself. But there are always flaws at universities and there are always problems. And usually those are more determining in the fact of, are you going there or not, than the good things. Um, 
So let's try to make this video a place where we can share our rather not like our rather bad experiences so we can warn everybody and we can see what are cases that happened only once or twice and what seems to be a more common theme. Thank you for your participation. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and stay tuned. Bye bye.